Good afternoon, friends. Wishing you a very warm welcome on to my channel back again. And here I am speaking from the garden of my quarter at IIT Kanpur on a very important day for scientific people or those who love science. Today is Darwin Day, 12th February 2025. 12th February in 1809, Charles Darwin, the great father of evolution, was born in Shrewsbury in England. This day is not a day to celebrate essentially Charles Darwin only. It's a day to celebrate science, the scientific method, the rational, think, rational thinking and evidence-based thinking. Charles Darwin is essentially thought to be the writer of origin of the species by natural selection and that, that was all about it. And there are controversies etc. around it and all, all, all it, lot of issues related with it. But what is the greatness of Charles Darwin? And that is exactly what I want to specify to you today. Charles Darwin was a true scientist. Instead of embroiling himself in controversies, he took this very simple path of actually continuing to do hard scientific research, but having fun along with it. His own big garden at Down House in Kent, he, he had a very big house. He was a rich man, of course became a laboratory to him and he and sometimes his son Francis Darwin helped him to make his experiments on plant. Unknown to many, Charles Darwin had a great contribution to botany because just after Charles Darwin uh, wrote his book, the next book that came was very very strange. The next book that came was The Movement and Habits of Climbing Plants. These, these kind of books means uh, the books were essentially about plants. So here are two books on Charles Darwin's work on botany. One is by uh, both botanists Ken Thompson and another is Dar the latest book on Darwin itself, Darwin and the Art of Botany, Observations on the Curious World of Plants. He was interested in creepers, he was interested in orchids and he was interested in Venus fly traps, which pitcher or pitcher plants were which traps insects and actually eats them as nutrition. For example, here is a creeper plant. Can you imagine that this plant which has grown up surprisingly in, in order to get a better sunlight has actually twined its with itself around around its own branches? And maybe not one plant, maybe there are two plants. It's very difficult for me to figure out because I'm not really not an expert in this. And it has grown, grown up there. And I want to also show you right away that there, you can see in my garden, you know, strings coming down from the trees. And But they are also creeper plants, which have started from the ground and gradually twined along with the trees. And then they have just grown up and up and then again came down. On the side you see the cactus here and this cactus that you see here on the side, I just want to go ahead and show you the cactus here, is that you see Darwin's war of nature is completely observable here. The cactus instead of growing up had to grow on the side because the other plants were also trying to grow up, competing to get sunlight. The, of course, they have been always already beaten by the big trees which has grown up in order to get more, be exposed to more sunlight. This attempt to grow up is to get more sunlight and that is how the adaptive forces work and that, that is how natural selection works. I do not know whether these <laughs> cactuses would finally live because many of them seems part seems to be dying off as they are trying very hard to compete. So this is the war of nature we are all in. And for example, in your body and my body, our bodies are fighting war with viruses and bacteria, and many of them may not be just known to science. I, as a mathematician, would like to uh, tell you that Darwin's theory was not the end of evolution. The ideas were evolved much further and the best formation which is called the modern th synthesis or best structuring of evolution came by application of mathematics. Ronald A. Fisher who is very well known to the students of statistics 
played a major role in mathematically modeling the idea of natural selection along with JBS Haldane and Siegel Wright. By the way, JBS Haldane spent his last life in uh, India in the Indian Statistical Institute and he built the Institute of Life Sciences in Bhuvaneshwar. And his son Francis Darwin with whom Charles Darwin had made many of his uh, experiments. Here for example this is an engraving of Darwin's house from James Costa's book. So here is this uh, book by James Costa, Darwin and the Art of Botany and Bobby Angel is a, a botanical artist where James T. Costa is a biologist. And here they show there are examples of Darwin's study where he used to study at Don House. And also there are example of him doing his plant experiments. It is very funny that Darwin would be actually interested in plants and his work on creeper plants and climbing plants are one of the most fundamental still in the, this area. So now, we, I'll tell you about some more Indian connection because people would like to know it. That here, Francis Darwin, his son, who accompanied him in making those experiments on plants, actually became a very famous botanist. And he was the professor of our own Acharya Jagadish Chandra Bose when Jagadish Chandra Bose went to teach Cambridge. And Jagadish Chandra Bose mentions Francis Darwin among his favorite teachers. So today on this day, let us celebrate science, let us celebrate rationality, let us celebrate evidence-based thinking which will take us forward in many many ways because we realize that scientific thinking has actually made us made human progress unfortunately about the subject of evolution there are many misunderstanding but there are a lot of logic and a lot of mathematical modeling has come in that subject a huge part of mathematics that has entered biology is is in genetics and in evolutionary biology so Many mathematicians have contributed there. So it is important that we take this beautiful view of life which Darwin has shown us. It is important that we scientists that we have to look at nature through a natural lens, not through other lenses. There are of course many other subjects in the world and people have their own choices. But the problem with evolution's public connect because it influences our public thought people try to st start giving explanations of their own, essentially trying to prove that, okay, this is all hogwash and doesn't have any meaning. But the problem is that often people get the facts wrong, people get the logic wrong, people do not see the evidence. But whatever is the issue, that's not the thing. So I, j I am doing this thing only for people who love science. They should be commenting and looking at this video. I'll have another video on my collection of Darwin books about his life, about various books about evolution and also about biology. And I, for example, like books on many wildlife, about plants and many kinds of stuff. So it's like a hobby. It's not my main profession, as you see. But every year I'll try to make celebrate this day because this is the day where we celebrate science. Thank you very much. Hope you liked it and we will show more books in the next episode.